am so glad you can join me today. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Guys, it's the holidays. It's the holidays. And we make, we always, there's a special cake, I should say, that we make for the holidays every year around Christmas time. And a lot of people look forward to it. I look forward to having a slice of it because it's really good, okay? So I wanna teach you today, if you've never had it before and you've never made it, I want you to try, try making it. And if you're from the islands and you're used to making it, guys, come along with me, pause this video so that we can bake it together. So to bake this cake is called, it has like three different names. They call it either black cake because it's black in color. You call it grape cake or you call it fruit cake. Fruit cake is because it has a lot of fruit inside of it. So let me show you some of the fruits here. In here, and I have a video of this up there. So if you've never seen the video, go ahead and take a look at it. In here, I have at least I have prunes, grapes, raisins, currants. They're all in here. And I have like a pong of each. And I also have cherries. And what I did is I put it all in a blender. I added some rum to it. I added wine to it. And I added a Guinness stout to it as well. Okay? So you can go ahead and check that video. Now, guys, usually when people making this, they set their fruits like a year ahead of time six months ahead of time three months ahead of time they do that way the rum and all the alcohol can soak into the fruits if you trying to make this for the first time and you did not remember to soak your fruits you didn't do it it's okay you go ahead and you follow the process i'm going to try to remember and leave that link below so you'll see how to go look at the fruits how i how i blended a lot blended it all up together but if you have not done yours as well, it's okay to do this. Then what you do is you put this all in a saucepan, add your alcohol, add everything to it, put in a saucepan, put your stove on low, keep stirring it for like 15 minutes or so, just heat it up, that way all the, the alcohol and so on can absorb in the fruit, okay? So that's it. Guys, we're gonna be making a cake. I am so excited because I love black cake. Now I am making two pounds of cake. That is a lot of cake. And I do that because I like to, to give some away, to send some to friends and so on. So I do a lot, okay? And I'm gonna explain all this as I go along. I'll be explaining more. Um, I have here, guess the way it's from the supermarket. When I saw this, I had to pick it up. I was like, oh my God. This is Barbados Turbinado Sugar. All the way from Barbados, guys. I was happy. I read, let me read the directions at the back for you. At the back, I, I of course, I had to read a little bit to make sure. Barbados Natural Raw Cane Sugar. But what I love about this is it says over here, um, source from small farmers in Barbados to ensure sustainable livelihood so this is from f small farmers so i'm telling you i am always here to support i'm here to support the small man who is trying to to do his best so i support you tina ran gotcha i'm supporting you today so now because i'm doing two pounds of um cake i need two pounds of sugar i already in here have two pounds of butter this was already weighed out. So whenever you bake it, make sure that you leave your butter and your eggs out for at least a while to come to room temperature. So this is at room temperature. It's soft, I put it in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead here with my scale and I'm gonna weigh out two, two pounds of sugar that I'm gonna be using. I know where my sugar ahead of time because I wanted you guys to see. <gasps> I'm using Barbados sugar. Now, listen, now if this is turned this way, I can't see it, right? So now I gotta turn it so I can see how much I have in there. That's about a pound. Does that say a little more? Okay, guys, so I have two pounds of sugar here. And 
I will be adding this sugar here. It's a lot of sugar, a lot of butter. And that's going to be a lot of cake, okay? So now what I'm going to do... So guys, by the way, I found that sugar in at Walmart. That's the first time I've seen something that said Barbados, and I was happy to see it. So I found it in at Walmart. So if you're looking for it, this is not a sponsored anything. I'm not being sponsored. I just found the sugar, and I, and I was happy to find it. So if you want the sugar, you can take a look at Walmart and see if you find some as well. Okay? That's a plug for Walmart. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, guys. Ooh, I didn't mean to turn that on yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to beat this sugar and this butter together until it becomes nice and fluffy, okay, like whipped cream. And once that becomes nice and fluffed up, I'm going to come back and show you the next step. So let's check this. So see guys, the sugar is melted. You see it's nice and fluffy, but when you're using this kind of sugar, just remember that you gotta um, blend it a little bit longer because the grains of it is a little coarse, okay? So this is our butter and our sugar has all melted in together. So now the next thing is the egg. So I'm gonna leave this here for a few minutes. Let me put this aside and I have eggs. Now let me explain something to you. As I told you earlier, I'm making two pounds of cake. Now this is two pounds of sugar, two pounds of butter. If you want to do one pound because you don't want to do as much, um, cut it in half. So you'll do one pound of sugar and one pound of butter. Okay? Now these are my eggs right here and I'm doing eight eggs per pound. So I have 16 eggs here. So you will use eight eggs for one pound. I'm doing two pounds, so it's going to be 16 eggs, okay? I figure, listen, I make a lot on Christmas because this is the only time of the year I make it once a year, so you have it to last you at least maybe right through to the new year, okay? So you make a little bit extra. So I am going to go ahead and crack these eggs in here, and then I'm going to blend the eggs up together, and then I will add the egg to the butter and sugar mixture, okay? So let me go ahead and, and break these in here, and then I'll be back to show you the next step okay now I have my eggs here they are cracked and I'm going to add a lime skin to it as well so what you do is you some people add the lime zest if you want to add some lime zest to it as well you can do that but I, I just add the lime skin to it and beat it with the skin inside of it. Oops. So I add this lime skin in there. I'll beat that in there, and then when it's all beat up, then I'll take it out. I have here some almond essence. I'm going to add one teaspoon of almond essence. To that and I have here this is vanilla extract I'm gonna add two of those and I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna go ahead and beat this up I'm gonna go ahead and beat this up before I add my eggs to the batter, I beat the eggs first, so I'm going to beat these up for a few minutes, and then we're going to add them to the batter. Okay, guys, so our eggs has been beaten. Now, I'm going to add the eggs to the batter. But I'm going to add it slowly. I'm not going to pour all of it in at once. I'm going to add it slowly. So I'm going to turn this back on. And then what we're going to do is just pour a little of this in there. 
and that's what I'm going to continue to do until it's all poured in. I'm also going to put the lemon, the lime skin, that the lime skin going there as well and beat it because it's not going to break apart. Okay, so I'll be back as soon as this is all done. So that's all the eggs in there. I'm going to let it beat for a few more minutes and then I'm going to transfer this to a big bowl and then we will add all our other ingredients to it as well. Here we are. Right, I'm just going to go ahead and take this out now. This has done its job. So I'll take that out. And I'm going to transport this to a bigger bowl. So make sure you have a nice big bowl that you're working with. Let me just take this out so it doesn't dirty everything. So now just rake everything out. Make sure you get everything out. You don't want to leave anything behind. And this is what we are left with right here, guys. So now we have to add some stuff to this. Yes, we're going to be adding some stuff to that. I also have here... This is two pounds of flour. Now, as I say, if you're making one pound, you will use one pound of flour, okay? If you're using one pound, you're still gonna use this amount of ingredients. This is one teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of allspice. You still use the same amount, but this is one teaspoon of salt. You can use half a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to add this all to this, to here. And once you add that all in, you add all this stuff to here, you have to make sure that you mix it up because you don't want patches and then you end up having like too much salt one place. And so you have to make sure that you mix it in well. Okay. Also to your flour, don't forget your baking powder, you need baking powder. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of baking powder. Now, if you were doing one pound, you would just use one tablespoon, okay? Don't get confused now. You can use one, you will use one, but this is two tablespoons of baking powder and this is two pounds of flour, okay? So I'm just gonna mix everything up, combine everything well. Okay. Now once I've done this, I'm gonna set this aside because I'm not ready to add that yet. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weigh my fruits so you would know the amount of fruits that's going into my cake, okay? So let's start here. I have my scale and I'm going to put this in here. Right now I'm going to measure out two pounds. I'm going to use more than two pounds. Oh, I'm dropping it. Can't afford to be dropping that stuff. I'm going to be using more than two pounds, but right now I'm going to measure two pounds. Oh, oh, look at that. It's good. This is really good. This is two pounds in here. So now I'm going to add this. This is the star of the show. So I'll add that here. And when we add this up, we're not adding any water or milk or anything to this cake that we would normally add to a regular cake. We're not gonna add any of that stuff. We'll add some wine if you need to add liquid. You'll add some wine to it, okay? Well, of course, this, this is not enough, so I'm going to add some more. So I just wanted you, I just wanna weigh out so you see how much I add all together so that you would know how much you're supposed to add. Let me get another spoon because I put this in here. And that have the eggs, so we don't want to put it back in there. Now I'm going to measure, or, um, not measure, I'm going to weigh another two pounds. Normally I would just put it in, but I want you guys to see how much I, I add in all together. So you know if you're making one pound instead of two pounds, you can just half it, okay? Oh, it's 
put two prongs right there. So I'm going to add this. So this is four prongs all together. So look at it right here. It's a lot of kick, guys. A lot of kick. Now, I don't know if you all have seen my previous video that I did a couple years ago. You will see that when I made this kit, I got some cans, some, some colored cans. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a few minutes from the dollar store, and I was able to bake those separately. Well, that's not happening this year because I went into the dollar store looking for those cans, and now those cans are they're not selling cans anymore, they're boxes. Okay. I looked in at Walmart. Walmart usually don't sell the can, but they sell the little cookies and one of those a little bigger can. They're plastic this time. So I have I don't have those colorful cans to bake in. Because I did promise that I would mail one to the friend of mine. But I'm sorry if you're watching this video. I'm not gonna be able to mail it because I don't have anything to mail it in. They don't the dollar store don't have those cans anymore. I asked the lady in there what happened. And she told me that that's all they received this year was the boxes instead of the cans. So that's unfortunate because I like baking in those cans. They're easy to ship because, you know, the kit would get messed up without that. Anyway, this is four pounds in here. And I'm going to put another two pounds in there. Because people like a lot of cake, a lot of fruits in their cake. Almost there. Oh my goodness. Guys, look. Just the right amount. Just the right amount. So all together, this is six pounds of fruit. Six pounds of fruit, guys. That means I can't bake no more for the year anyway, because I used up all my, my fruit. Six pounds of fruit. And I'm gonna go ahead. There's a little bit left in here. No sense in saving it, so I'm just going to go ahead and add that in there, okay? So if you're baking one of these and you have, you can use, if you're doing one pound, you can use like three pounds of fruit if you have that much. If you don't have it and you have less than that, it's fine. If you have less than that, it is fine. Get it all over here. And this is my fruits in here, guys. And you can tell by, by doing this the different feel of when you stir it. Now, guys, you see we have a nice dark color here. But this is not dark enough, of course, because this is called a black cake, so it needed to be a little darker. So um, now I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. And in order to do that, I have brownin, brownin. So we're gonna use some brownin in here. I'm gonna go ahead and measure it so you can see how much I'm using. This is a tablespoon right here. So this is like one, two. I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna do four tablespoons. And what I'm looking for is a, the color, okay? You want a particular color. You don't wanna make it like too dark because it's gonna turn, it's gonna get darker inside of the oven as it is baking, okay? So um, I'm gonna show you the color that I'm looking for. This is called black cake, so it's gonna be black, but it's not gonna be too black. You don't want it to be too black. You want it to have that nice color, okay? So I'm gonna mix this up well till I get the color I want. And this color is going to be based on the amount of fruits that you put in there too. Because you see, um, 
I used a lot of fruits in here. Some people don't use that much fruit, so you don't have to use as much as I use. If you don't have that much, you use what you have. Okay, you use more fruit if you want a nice fruity color, but you know, I'm not baking anymore. What am I gonna put that down to sit till next year for? I don't need it to sit till next year. So I'm gonna keep stirring this. Guys, so I have some parchment paper here. Okay, so what I did is I took my pan that I'm going to be using, I put on top of it, and I drew a circle around the bottom. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to go around my circle in here. When I cut my circle, I'm going to take my paper and I'm just going to put it and line the bottom of my pan. I already buttered the pan. Okay, even though I put the paper in there, I buttered the, I buttered the bottom of the pan and I'm gonna butter the top of the paper. Take some of my butter and I just go around the bottom and just butter the bottom. Take a little more. And that's how you line and bottom. Some people line it all the way up to the top. You can also do that as well. Okay, that's good enough. Moving on along. Now that we have this and we mix this up really well, you see all the ingredients that I added to this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my flour. As I said, this is two pounds of flour. So let me just go ahead you see the texture of it and you would and you would know. And you're gonna mix this in. And whenever you, you're making your cake and adding your flour, you don't wanna beat it too much. You just wanna, you know, mix it in well without beating too much. And you're gonna add a little bit at a time, never add all at one time, because then you may end up having too much in there. So just add a little bit at a time. See, it's too wet. So you mix that in. Before I add any more flour to this, I'm going to add some more wine and some rum. Some person wrote me and asked me, if I don't have the alcohol that you have, what kind of alcohol that I can use? You can just try a wine that you like and just use that and any kind of rum, I'm guessing. This is from Barbados and I'm used to this kind of wine, that's why I use that. But Jamaicans use a different kind of wine. People use different kind of wine, so, you know, you can use any wine that you wanna use. As long as you get the flavor and the taste that you like. And this is some rum. So I'm adding like half um, wine and this is half rum here. Now we're gonna pour this in here. Even though the, um, even though the wine, even though the fruits have a lot of alcohol in it, I'm just gonna add some more alcohol to it. Because a lot of this it gets burned off in the heat so you don't have to worry about that and then mix that in and continue to mix that in so now I'm gonna use my last set of flour so as I said this is two pounds of flour if you were doing one pound, you'd be using one pound of flour, okay? So I'm gonna mix this in here and that should be it. After this, I think I have everything that I need in here to be in here. So the next thing is, for this will be the pans. Okay guys, look at it. 
it is all done all the flour is mixed in everything is mixed in it's all done so this is what it looks like the texture and the CF the spoon stands up in the center it's all done my spoon is standing up in the center okay so now I'm going to go ahead and add this to my pans. So let's get that started. Okay, I have four pans here. I don't know if I'm going to need more. But as I said, I found this and this is the lead to it. I found this earlier this year in at Walmart and I paid, I think it was the like eight bucks or so. They had cookies. They had those cookies on the inside. And I said, let me just get this early. I am glad I did because I have not seen them since. And as I said, I cannot find any more like this. They now still have the color, but they're in their boxes instead of tins. The ones at Walmart is box is plastic, but the ones at the dollar dollar store, dollar twenty five, you know, whatever they are now, is boxes. So it is hard for me to ship it like that. I can't ship it like that. It has to be in a tin with a lid. So I'm not happy about that. Because I like to give my friends, you know, a nice little gift like that. But anyway, moving on along, we've got to work with what we got. So I'm going to put, go ahead now and put some cake over here. Looks good. So I am going to take it out with this and pour it in here. Okay. So never fill your cake all the way up to the top because when it starts to cook and it rises, you don't want it to come over. So you don't fill it all the way to the top. You fill it at least three full for the way. Okay. So let me go ahead and fill another one. Hope I got enough. I think this is about it guys get four out of here and this all depends of course on how big your pans are I like those little small pans because I can just give those away but Okay guys, so these are good is my cakes right here. So when you finish, what you're gonna do is you're gonna just to make sure everything is level out and there's no air pockets. So you're gonna just go go around to each of them like that. Just level them out. So you don't have like one side high and one side low. Okay, so you're gonna do this to all of them. There we go. And then this one over here, the same thing. You think about you think about this cake, guys, is it can last for months. You can leave it in this tin. You can um, every once in a while, if you're not gonna be eating it for a while, you can put a little bit of alcohol on it to make sure it doesn't dry out. Do not put it in the freezer. I tried out one year. I put my cake. I had so much cake. I ended up putting it in the freezer when it was ready for it. I forgot it was in there. When it was ready for it, I had to end up throwing it away because it was dry. Even though I put alcohol on it, the alcohol just kind of settled on the top and just float, just you know, drizzled to the bottom, but it didn't soak into the cake. It was dry, it was brittle, it was not good. Don't put your cake in the freezer. This has enough alcohol in it to preserve it so it can sit on your counter for as long as you want it. So if you want to save it for New Year, it can sit on your counter. If you want to do it now for Christmas, you don't have to put it in the refrigerator. It doesn't need to be in the refrigerator, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the refrigerator. I'm talking refrigerator. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the oven. Set your oven at a low heat. You want this to take its time and cook. You don't want to put it too high. So set your oven for about 250 to 275. Put it in there. Let it stay. You can check in the oven in the hours time. You can check it to see how you know if it's done or what it looks like. Let it stay for like another half an hour. 
keep checking it get your toothpick and check it to make sure just check the center of it to see if it comes out wet you know that you need to let it stay a little bit longer until it comes out dry okay so I'm gonna put these in the oven and I'll come back to you as soon as they're all done all right guys so I already took a couple of the cakes out of the oven I still have a couple more in there so I'm gonna go ahead and show exactly what I'm gonna do with these two but to let you know they took two hours and 30 minutes in the oven and um, that's because I put my stove lower down to 275 okay so it took its time two hours and 30 minutes and this all depends on the size of your cake and so on but that's why I said in an hour so I'll go ahead and check okay so now in this small bottle here I have half wine and rum mixed together and what I'm gonna do I let these um, cool for a little bit they're still warm but they're not hot hot I let them cool down so I'm gonna go ahead and spray them now with this spray so just just wetting them so this is just rum and wine as I said and I'm wetting them with so what happened is the cake is gonna absorb all of that alcohol so I'm gonna leave these here so they can cool some more so this will continue to cool now I can cut it but it's a little bit too warm to cut I think I should let it stay for a while and it's kind of late so I probably won't taste it until tomorrow okay so I'll come back tomorrow I'll taste it and I will tell you what it tastes like guys look at the cakes they're all done here they are and it is the day after it is the day after I finished these cakes last night. It was about 11 o'clock when I finished these cakes. I was tired. I went to bed. Okay. So today's the day after. This is, you know, I went to work today. I came home, all that kind of stuff. So I want to taste the cakes now for you and show you. Now, as you can see here around the rim, the cake move away from the rim. And what I did is I take a knife. You just take a knife and you just um, just go around to make sure it's not stuck to the bottom okay and then when you do that you could just take and then this is your paper here you just take your paper off okay I'm gonna put it back in here but I just want you to see that and then of course I did one in my can because this is the only can I can get. I can't get the small cans, which I explained. So let me put these over here. So guys, those are the cakes. And these are a couple that I took out. And I just kind of put that stuff on it make it look pretty for you guys, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. I'm going to taste it. I'm going to tell you exactly what it tastes like. So let me take this little thing off. I was just wanting to look pretty for you. So go ahead. My husband has been waiting all day. My husband has been waiting all day for me to cut this cake. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut it so that he can get a piece of it. And of course, guys, you, you keep your little rum and your little wine. This is rum and wine mixed together. And whenever you want to, just to case, just make sure you can go ahead and just, okay, like this. And I'm telling you right now, do not eat this cake and drive. Because it has a lot of rum, a lot of wine in it. Don't eat it and drive. So let me go ahead and cut it. Okay, good. Guys, here's the cake. It looks nice it's moist let me go ahead and taste it and tell you what it tastes like but this is the black cake that we worked on so let me go ahead and taste it we don't use fork for this we use our hand that's good guys this is a kit This is a cake that when you eat it, 
please do not go driving because it has a lot of alcohol inside of it. One, it is, of course, as I just said, contains the alcohol. It is nice, it's moist, which is important. You want a nice moist cake. It is dense. You can taste the, it is, I should say it's very rich. It's a very rich cake, which means that you can only eat a small piece of it at a time. This should last a long time. It should last right through to the new year. It is delicious. Delicioso. I want you guys to go ahead and try it. There's it a few steps to it. There's a few steps to it, but you start from early and you can do it. Guys, I had fun making this. Showing you guys how to make our Belgian black cake. I hope you guys go ahead and make one. Follow the video. I made it pretty simple and easy. I used a lot of fruits in there. You don't have to use as much fruit as I used in yours. If you have not grown your fruits, you are not too late. You can still do it. And as I said, put it in a pot, steam it, and they all you get all the flavors of the rum and the wine into the fruits. And then you can go ahead and make your cake. Okay? Guys, don't forget to share the video because there's people out there who want to be able to do the same thing. Make a cake for the weekend, for the holidays. So go ahead and share the videos. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have not subscribed, subscribe to the video and give it a thumbs up. Okay? And press that bell notification because it lets you know every time I put a video up. I had fun making this. And I hope you have fun making one for yourself. Until next time. Bye-bye.